hello everyone and welcome back once again to another video i hope you enjoy going along with me throughout this day we are going to be canning some peaches and just kind of spending the day um, here just getting some things done so i hope you enjoy this video today we are starting off with our peaches i had a few uh, that were a little bit later in getting ready getting softened up so i'm going to finish this box up and get these canned and get these put on the shelves for later. So the first thing that I'm doing, of course, is just peeling the peaches um, and having them, putting them in water, and then we'll get them sliced up a little bit later. Usually when your peaches are nice and soft, you can just kind of tear off the skins. They come off really easy and you don't have a lot of waste with your skins. I haven't actually canned peaches in quite some time, so um, I was a little rusty on, you know, how long to pressure can them and stuff, um, but we got it figured out then in the end. And I'll just kind of show you how I did mine, and you can adjust it, you know, to how you like yours. And in case you're wondering what um, kind of peaches these are, these are contender. There's lots of different kinds, of different varieties of peaches, um, but this is just the kind that I did for this year and we'll see how we like them. We did have some like for fresh eating. I just sliced them up, put some sugar on them. We, you know, you could eat them with some ice cream or with milk and they were really good. Once I have them all um, peeled, I'm gonna just set them over here on um, over here by the sink, and then I needed to wash some of my quart jars. Um, they were stored away, so they were kind of you know just kind of dirty and dusty, so they needed just a quick washing. We're gonna go ahead and wash these really quick to get these ready um, to put the peaches in. And I wasn't quite sure how many I would need, so I brought up way more than I needed, um, but it was fine. Now we can go ahead and slice these into the jars. So I just have my jar funnel on the top just to kind of guide my peach slices. And then I'm sli slicing them in half and then slicing them in smaller um, slices the other way. And then just filling up the jar to the brim or like to the neck of the jar, kind of trying to pack them in there, get as many in as you can. And then the kids were outside playing. They came in and wanted a little snack. Um, they love these peaches, so I gave them a half. And they went outside and 
were eating the peaches outside. It was such a beautiful day outside and they spent most of the day out there just playing with their bikes and um, yeah, just having so much fun outside. And it was interesting just to watch them um, as I was slicing my peaches. I could see them outside just running around and having fun. and they came in for seconds. And as I was slicing my peaches, um, I was looking out the window and seeing them right outside the window. They were eating their peaches and Jameson is trying to ride my bike. I guess it's funner to ride a big bike. And Chloe was on her little strider and they were just taking a break and having their little snack. Once I have them all in jars, I'm gonna go ahead and cover them in our juice. So you can do this a couple different ways. Mine is a light syrup, so it's one part sugar to four parts water. And you just dissolve your sugar in your water before pouring it over your peaches. Um, you can go all the way up to a heavy syrup, which is half water and half sugar, um, which makes them very sweet if you prefer it that way. Um, you can kind of adjust this however you want to do for your, yourself. Once I had the juice, um, the syrup, all the way up to the neck of the peaches, now I'm just going to uh, kind of go around the rims, make sure there's no juice or any nicks or cracks on the top rims there before I put on the lids. And then we'll go ahead and put on the rings, just make them nice and finger tight. So we got seven jars, which is perfect for a canner. This will fill up the canner and we'll have one batch to do. So now I'm getting my pressure canner out. I'm just getting that set up here on the stove. I'm gonna go ahead and put in my jars. And then next you'll want to put in your water. Now for my pressure cooker, this is two quarts, but check definitely um, in your manual for how much water needs to be in your cooker. And then just making sure everything is nice and secure before I tighten up um, our little screws here to keep the lid on nice and tight. And then as you're tightening up your screws, um, just do like opposite sides so that you get it all nice and secured um, all the way around. We're gonna turn on the burner and then while I'm kind of waiting for that to heat up, I'm just gonna get a few other things done here, just get some laundry folded and that way I can kind of keep an eye on it. I'm close to it, um, I can watch it, but still get some other things done.
and here the kids were out on the front porch. Um, they were playing here and they were watching our the farmer. He was working on getting our hay all baled up and so they were out there watching him do that. And I'm going to go ahead and just clean up here in the kitchen. I had a few dishes that needed to be washed um, and just get the counters cleared off a little bit. So here we are back at the canner and once you hear that um, hissing sound it's coming out of the little spout there on the top and so you're going to set your timer for 10 minutes and let that um, hiss and yeah, steam for 10 minutes. Then we're going to take our weight for our pressure and we're going to put it on at the 10. We want 10 pounds of pressure. And you can kind of watch the pressure, you know, it'll go up pretty quickly after that until it hits 10 pounds pressure. And then you'll hear this sound, which is a jiggling sound for the pressure gauge. It just slowly lets out the pressure. So you want to turn down your burner um, until it kind of keeps that 10 pounds pressure. You want about one to four of those jiggles every minute. Um, so once you just turn down your burner, kind of adjust your burner until it's correct. And then you'll set your timer for, um, I did 15 minutes for uh, quart jars of the peaches. And then while that is kind of cooking and I'm waiting on the timer, I'm gonna go ahead and just get something really quick together for lunch. Um, I'm gonna just make some noodles with some chicken. I'm putting some chicken bouillon, uh, the better than bouillon, in some water. And then we'll add in our noodles once that is boiling. And then just get those nice and softened. I'm gonna go ahead and just fix myself a little side salad here with some spinach. And I was watching the kids, they were outside watching the tractors going. Um, this was very entertaining for them, watching them bale up the hay. Chloe was um, very worried about our puppy, went out into the field. Um, she was try trying to kind of call him back, but he was interested in something out there and was having fun just running around. Um, yes, but she was a little bit worried about him. And then here we are about done um, with our timer here. So once the timers went off, I'm just going to turn off the burner. Just let it set. Don't move the canner at all. Just let it go. Leave on your pressure gauge and just let it uh, co come down to zero all by itself. All right, and now we are just adding in a pint of my canned chicken into the noodles and adding in um, some salt, just getting it seasoned up. Alright, and that was our lunch. Just super simple um, salad and noodles. Kids came in and they were pretty hungry by this time. And so we could sit down, eat our lunch, and watch out the window, watch them finish up with the, the bales.
And then once our pressure has went all the way down, it goes like below zero a little bit, you can take that pressure gauge off and unscrew your lid very carefully. And then you'll just want to open that kind of away from yourself. And then your jars are ready to um, get taken out. And then I usually just put them on like a tea towel or something um, just to let them cool. And then you don't want to move them or just, yeah, just leave them in that spot for about 24 hours. And next I wanted to work on Chloe's closet just a little bit, get a few things back in her closet. So I'm just putting up this shelf and then I'm going to go ahead and just put uh, things back into the closet. So we recently got this room painted, um, so you can kind of see a little bit the paint color that we have here, this pretty um, mauve -y pink color. Um, I'm so loving this color. Chloe is so happy with her room as well. Now it's just to get the rest of the room done. It's kind of been a slow process. I haven't really had time to work on it too much, um, but it'll get done eventually. So this first basket that you saw me put some pants in, some jeans, those are just clothing that are still a little bit too big um, for either one of them. And then the next basket we have just some baby blankets. Um, I keep these in here like if we have some guests um, that have, you know, smaller children that need a little blanket, I can quick grab some out. And then the third one is just um, some wet wipes, some pull-ups that are still from when Chloe used to wear these. like. For going to bed and stuff um, but I kind of actually forgot I still had some left but um, you never know when you need these And then I quickly wanted to just measure the doorway here in the closet just to kind of get an idea of how long of a curtain that I need to get. Um, where I'm going to go ahead and hang up a curtain here at the closet. And moving out to the kitchen again, I had this um, cantaloupe that really needed to be sliced up. I got it from a local farmer here and they were marked down quite a bit because they were kind of getting soft and it did have quite a few like spots stuff that I had to cut out but it was really good and we enjoyed this um, on this warm afternoon. And it's always everyone's favorite time of the day when dad comes home from work. Um, the kids are always so excited to see him. Um, so to see him pull in the driveway is always a time of excitement. <laughs> And now this is kind of later on towards evening. Um, they wanted to wash my dishes and who am I to say no? They um, were willing and they offered to wash up the dishes that were sitting on the counter um, and they did a really good job. Um, not everything was maybe done in the traditional manner as you can see, but um, they got the job done and yeah, maybe a few dishes needed to be checked before they went back in the cupboards, but um, practice mates perfect.
later on in the evening we um, needed to go into town to get some groceries and things so um, after everyone was showered and ready to go we're just getting the finishing touches I need to comb Chloe's hair um, get that ready and get everyone out the door Alright, so this is what I'm wearing tonight, just my navy blue dress with a black um, vest type cardigan on top, and here is the bump, <laughs> and just with some sparkly um, sandals. So first of all, we went to the grocery store and just did some grocery shopping, and just got a few things that we needed. Well, our cart was overflowing, but um, anyways, we went, did all of our grocery shopping first of all. And then we went to Olive Garden to eat some dinner. Um, this was actually kind of a belated birthday dinner for me. So this was fun to get some good Olive Garden. Um, love eating there. They have some really good food. And of course their salad and breadsticks are always a hit. And then of course after we got back there was lots of groceries and things to put away. Um, just unpacking all the bags, getting everything put away in its right place.
Alright, so I am going to leave you with that. I hope you enjoyed coming along with me today and just spending the day with me. And I will see you next time. Bye!